today's yarn is what I'm calling approachable art yarn, which it doesn't look so great at the moment, but it what I mean by that is I'm spinning a single ply that is slightly thick and slightly thin. So I've got these sort of poofy, soft, single ply spaces here, followed by sections that are a little bit smaller and uh, tighter, but not anything that's like majorly drastic. So this isn't like the really thick and thin, you know, chunky, thick and thin yarn. This one, I wanted to look kind of uniform from a distance, but then when you actually got into working with it and looking at it, you could tell that it, it did have this kind of slightly thick and thin texture that you can see running through right there. So the way I am spinning this is this was from one of our monthly dyed braids. This one was technically the uh, <laughs> Violet the Lovebird braid, which I really liked. And so what I did was I went through and I pulled through strips in this. And I made them about the size, I made just like a big pile. I always have like a big unceremonious pile of uh, roving. So I've gone through and I've pulled it, you don't wanna pull it too thin because then you can't have the thick part, but about the width of my pinky finger, like that. And so I've got my pile sitting over here on the sofa next to me. And so what I'm doing is I'm just sort of working from one side to the other. So let me attach my fiber. And get going again and if you've never spun slightly thick and thin I really love it it's what some people would consider purposely spinning bad yarn but you know I like it so I don't care what I teach and I do go into more depth than this on the dream yarn course which is on patreon but you can see here is you want basically your key facts for doing this is you want to have it on a larger whirl which you can see I have on a larger whirl here on my king bee I also, you want to kind of keep your feet kind of slow. So this is where, like I said, you can kind of, you want to be able to, and this one thing I really like about the Spinolution wheels, this one's the King Bee, and this one kind of in particular is it's very responsive to me kind of starting and stopping. I'm actually spinning right now. I know you can't see it. I wanted you to see my feet. Um, the kind of starting and stopping. This wheel is very responsive to that. So like I said, I find that with all of my wheels, which are all Spinolution, but you know, get to the point where it's easy for you to kind of control speed with your feet. And the hand motion that's going with the feet is when I get to the part that I want to be thicker, I'm actually really slowing my feet down, almost stopping them. You can see the thick part. I kind of wrap, I've got a pinch here just kind of wrap my fingers around the fluffy part <laughs> let and then kind of smooth it down so it's still you can see it's still fluffy but it's not compact and then you get to the pinch part there so here it's really just a feel thing so I'm wrapping just kind of loosely like a little cocoon and then I'm getting the pinch going again back here in my other hand and then smooth. So it's really fun. I love spinning yarn this way. I find that you get in a good rhythm with it. I like the, uh, the technique. And you don't have to stop your feet. You just want to do what works for you because you're trying not to get twist, too much twist in that fluffy part. And so like I said, this is shown in more detail and a bunch of different angles on our dream yarn course. And that was with more of a exaggerated thick and thin yarn. This one, my goal was, I really like what I've been calling approachable art yarn. <laughs> I definitely, if I'm gonna go through the trouble of spinning yarn, I want it to be distinctive and original in either color or texture or both. Because if not, then why not just buy a fabulous mill spun, in my opinion. So my idea for approachable art yarn is I want yarn that is unique and interesting and has a lot of texture, but also, um, you know, I'm a knitter. So I want something that is easy to work with as far as knitting goes. And, you know, where I do have projects that you can work like the big lock spun yarn into, you know, I mean, sometimes it's just not feasible for what you're wanting to do, whereas a yarn like this, this is going to come out somewhere between the thin pieces being more worsted 
and the thicker parts being more bulky. So, I mean, I would end up calling this final yarn kind of a worsted bulky blend. You can pick pretty much any pattern as long as it's not something that, you know, had a ton of lace work detail or something that that would just be too busy. But you could pick pretty much any basic pattern that the yardage work, uh, you could probably start with bulky patterns first just because then the smaller parts would just be a little smaller. But it's gonna work in this really pretty texture. I always say go with a more simple pattern, but it's definitely still knittable. And by knittable, I mean, and of course it's very twisty right now, it's still very pliable. It's not something that's gonna have a bunch of stuff sticking out from it or that's gonna be like a, like a core spun or something that's got like a real thick kind of not pliable base. This is still a very knittable yarn. So that is what I'm making and I'm really excited about it. And I will show you the uh, final yarn, how it turns out. But yeah, like I said, you're just gonna slow your feet down, wrap, gently wrap, and then it's just, it's a smoothing down motion and then get to the thin part. So just wrap, pull, and a wrap. Let it, you're just letting it be thick. So whatever that needs to be for you, for me that just means kind of pinching behind the thick part and then smoothing it down. Cause you still want some twist in that part, obviously for it not to come apart. So that is today's yarn, which is an approachable art yarn, slightly thick and thin, very squishy, nice single ply yarn. So I can't wait to see how that turns out. So I know you're dying to know how my yarn turned out. So this is my slightly thick and thin, uh, approachable art yarn as promised. And you can see it's got this really cool texture with the thicker parts mixed in with the thinner parts. Let me unwind it for you. I just took it off the Nitty Knotty, so it probably could have Nitty Knottied a little bit longer, but there you go. That's a good, you can see the uh, variation in not just the colors, but also the texture. And uh, you can see it's very soft. This was a uh, super fine merino braid that it was spun from. And so it's very soft. It's like a fluffy little cotton ball. And like I said, I probably should have let it rest a little bit longer than it did, but I wanted to go ahead and film this and take some pictures so I could edit the rest of this video. But I'm really happy with how pliable it turned out while also just having a really cool texture. So if you have never spun a yarn this way, I would highly recommend it. And like I said, if you would like more of an in-depth uh, look at it, please consider checking out our Dream Yarn course, which is on the uh, Crafty Housewife Yarns slash My Local Wool Patreon account. And uh, all of the proceeds from that, and this will be on the uh, any lesson part. No, that's in the, it's in the part with the yarn spinning lessons. You can find in the art yarn section, the spinning thick and thin yarn for more in-depth look on, on that. And you can do, that's one cool thing about doing yarn this way, is you can do your thick and thin parts kind of as exaggerated or as not as you would like. So I think these, I mean, this might be really exaggerated for some people. I've done some that are really like thick and, you know, I made a cool scarf. One of our uh, scarf patterns that was on our the website in the free pattern part I used, I think it was called like the Cool Chick Scarf, uh, had a lot of, my kids loved it, so I think that's what they called it. But it was really brightly colored and it had, um, it was a more exaggerated thick and thin yarn. Whereas I'd say this one ranks somewhere in the middle. But if you're somebody who spins super even yarn all the time, even just doing a little bit, I mean, <laughs> if you do super even like three ply yarn as your uh, go-to, then even just sp spinning a regular, single ply might be out there for you. But if you just add a little bit of hold and pinch and hold and pinch, you can end up with some really cool texture. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if you have any video topic spinning requests, please let me know. And uh, as always, we're usually in the Facebook group. We are wrapping up Spin Her Free. It's been long right now. And then I'm sure we'll be on to some other exciting adventures soon. So hope you're well and talk to you soon. Yeah.